Uh, number one, I encourage you to uh, stay on for the long haul because I want to wrap this up with some notes on real estate. And real estate is a great vehicle for financial success. I trust that you've heard of it from many folks, from uh, the Donald to rich dad, poor dad, and all of those people who identify this as something that has worked since time immemorial. And it is true. It is worth noting that real estate is a, an option that is for people who can afford a down payment. It's an option for people who don't necessarily need very quick returns, usually around five years plus. But we're going to get into it. We're going to talk just a little bit about that. The first thing I wanted to do was kind of dispel some mythology uh, that you hear on the internet. You often hear these get rich quick schemes. And ironically, you hear these schemes from people who are not rich. And strangely, these are people who, if they have any money, it all came from their efforts on YouTube. And so if they're telling you how to get rich doing anything other than YouTube, which is what they know, then they're probably making up stuff or just reading off of a random article. We're going to dispel that. We're going to talk about what makes sense, what is realistic. And you'll get to hear that from a businessman who has operated in several industries across the world successfully at a high level long before YouTube. Major Mind and Soul said, peace to the saints. Let's work. Yes, indeed. And we have a billionaire, number one, said, thoughts on duplex, triplex investing for monthly cash flow. Lots of real estate ways, but I'm not sure which one would be best. Commercial, residential, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Number one, residential is not an investment property. So that's already off of the table. There are different types of loans that you would get for a commercial property versus a residential property. And in addition to that, there are different levels of down payment that are required typically significantly more if you're looking at a commercial opportunity. And with regards to duplex, triplex, triplex, et cetera, you really are going to decide that according to the cost of real estate, your pocketbook, and what you're trying to do in terms of profitability. Obviously, generally speaking, the higher number of units in the given piece of real estate, the more opportunity there is for profitability. Generally, if you're starting something new, I don't care what it is, if it's a product-based business, if you're the new guy on a basketball team, whatever it is, when you're starting new, you generally want to ease your way in, figure out what time it is, learn the lay of the land minimize the impact of your mistakes because undoubtedly you will make mistakes when you first start. So that being the case, I highly recommend that you would start with a duplex rather than a triplex. And if you've never owned real estate at all, you might start with first an owner occupied uh, purchase. And we'll talk a little bit more about real estate uh, toward the end of this. So I encourage you all to stay on for that. And then secondly, uh, because I think that real estate is such a, a stable vehicle, predictable vehicle for financial success. I want you guys to know we're going to go through a number of, you know, supposed uh, you know, ways to get rich and or ways to make money. And a lot of these ways to make money strangely are like from home working remotely. It's like, goodness, do you want the money or do you not want the money? If you want the money, you can't have all these caveats. Oh, I got to work from home. It has to be flexible hours. It's like, do you want the money or not? That is one of the major problems with society today, and especially people who don't have money. You hear me? They ain't willing to do what it takes. We're going to dispel a lot of this hogwash. Now, I want to play a clip from a YouTuber so that you guys can take a look at how idiotic the things that they say are. And then I'll go ahead and give you a meaningful breakdown so that you aren't wasting your time and money on things that won't make you a penny. Now, uh, the first thing is I'm going to categorize these opportunities into those which are unrealistic and those which are realistic within the category of unrealistic, meaning it's not likely that you're going to make a penny doing this. Uh, there'll be the subcategories of, well, you lack audience to actually execute on this, or this is a heavy marketing lift, which means if you don't have significant marketing talent and skills, then you shouldn't try this. And usually behind marketing will require some marketing spend. If it's unrealistic, there may be a skill gap, which is to say that you require significant skills to execute on this financial opportunity. Then there are other opportunities that are just unlikely, meaning it's a it's a crapshoot. It's not going to work for most people, no matter what. Then there's the category of excess competition, meaning, yeah, it could work if there wasn't a thousand people doing it at the exact same second you're doing it. We have Jose on Cash Ops Intuition. Shout to Jose. We also have T says peace to the saints. They both have been to a conference. And yes, then indeed. T, you had a consultation with. They both know and want money. Yeah, and, and they know that I'm talking the real. We have don't get comfortable said peace to the saints. Looking to make money from my six figure nine to five and funnel into investments and new streams of income that will decouple me from my job. 
That can be done. You have to remember that when you're looking at investments, investments are returning you back a percentage. You're, you're almost never doubling, tripling your money with investments. Usually when you invest in an index fund or you give your money to a financial planner or one of these types, they're going to give you a return if they're good, you know, 5%, 8%, 9%, 10%. Let's get crazy, 20%. But it'll rarely be enough that you can quit your nine to five. If you really want to quit your nine to five, you're serious about that, then you're going to need a product-based business or you're going to need some significant real estate holdings. And so we're going to talk about the real estate side of this uh, after this. I'm always talking about the product-based business side of things. And uh, we'll go from there. But I do want to warn everyone. A lot of people are talking about, you know, I want to live from uh, passive income. I want to have paper assets. I want a good stock portfolio. You know, you have to have a tremendous amount of money in the stock market to live off of dividends or to live off of, you know, you know, payouts from your stock. Or you have to have a tremendous amount of money to live off of interest. So generally, those are not the best vehicles for folks who are not hugely liquid. We have Khalil sent tuition on Cash App, who also has yes, been indeed. to a conference. Yes, indeed. It's different over here. We know our people. We have Spilla de Drilla. Who? Say it. Just Spilla de Drilla. Spill it a drill. Spill it, spill it, spill it a driller. Go ahead. Okay. He said peace. Spill it a driller. Peace to the spill saints. Spill it, Peace spill to the saints. Spill it a Go ahead. Fully recovered, back like I never left. Now we're talking my language. Quick question. Can a boss be a boss if he's the only employee in his business? Here's a, let me give you a paradox. You're also the janitor. When you first start a business, you're the boss, you're also the janitor, you're the secretary, you're everything. So you're always also the janitor. And yeah, you're the boss as well. Now, surely it appears to others more so that you're the boss when you have employees. But the best kind of business is one that is light on employees and heavy on dollars. You see, most people, they, they look at things, but they don't understand things. They look, but they don't understand. That's why we're here today. But the most important thing is not being a boss. It's not appearing a boss. It's being able to count up those dollars. So many people in this era are misguided, whereas they count likes. I only count dollars. I never count likes. I don't care about a double tap. You heard me? We're focused on eyes on the prize. Thank you for that question, Saint. We have Twano said, wish I would have found you sooner. All the game on this channel alone is advice that would have helped me in many ways as a younger man. Deeply appreciate the time you put into helping others. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That, that means much to me. Now let's talk about it. Yes, in the other category of you know, your money-making opportunities that are typically promoted online, you have those which are realistic. Still within that, you must have categories. You have those money-making opportunities that are realistic if you live in a developing economy. So I might call it the third world places where labor cost is low and expenses are low. Then you have opportunities that are realistic for everyone. And then you have opportunities that are only realistic for those who live in developed economies where wages are high and basic resources or excuse me, basic resources are accessible. Utilities are reliable. Internet is fast. There are certain opportunities that are really only suitable for those who lived in the developed world. Some might call it the first world. And then thirdly, there are opportunities that are realistic based only on if you have STEM skill set, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, these kinds of things. We have Rob said, peace to the saints, sent my deposit for the Sassan men trip. Wanted to know if confirmations will be sent. By the way, the MDB label hats had me catch a couple broads after they complimented Hello. the hat, bait, hook, and sinker. Yiddig. Yiddig. Uh, shout out to the real ones. We might have to link this in the description for people who don't have it. You heard me? This is damn near the uniform hat. This is this is the one. This is number one. This first one came out. Let's listen to a YouTuber real quick. I want to pick this individual apart so that you guys can understand you know, what's real and what's fake. And then more importantly, I want to take my mind and implant a bit of it in your mind so that you have a lens through which you can see the world, you can see business, you can assess real value, and you can identify, ah, that person's fake and phony. Here we go. There's going to be a lot of value here. And please ask your questions early, send your tuition early, because I do have a hard stop for I have a business meeting. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll put a, an alarm on shortly. You guys might be saying, Marquette, it's Friday. 
how do you have a business engagement on Friday night? It gets like that. It gets like that. When, when you're really balling, you hear me? When you live the good life as a businessman, every day is money. Every day is payday. Every day is payday. Every day we work, every day is payday. And we live every day like it's uh, Christmas. It's a beautiful thing. Now, uh, first off, so we have this individual who has, uh, I think, a million plus subscribers. And this is clearly a, a Thai lady boy who surgeried out. Let's hear what this individual has to say. And let's figure out, if, is this a reasonable, uh, is this a believable person, number one? And then number two, are the opportunities they're giving applicable to you or most people watching? Let's pay attention. This video, I'm going to rate nine pounds. Oh, and by the way, confirm that the audio is good. There's no echo and all that good stuff. Go ahead and put this in my headphones. Make sure there's no echo. A lot of technology over here. Passive income ideas based on how hard it is to get started and how hard it is to maintain and make money from it. These days, I've been averaging around 30K USD dollars to 40K monthly. Okay, so that's number one. The individual says that they've been averaging 30000 to $40,000 per month in their earnings. That's important to note. And, you know, on an annual basis, that's not a bad go. That's about half a million bucks annually. So that's respectable. The important thing to understand is twofold. Number one, for those of you who don't have Boss University, you should get it. It will teach you a lot. Boss University, I believe, is linked in the description. One thing in Boss University, there's an entire lesson, a whole section on etiquette, etiquette alone, which is to say, how do you stand? How do you sit? How do you speak? What are proper manners in the upper class? One thing I can tell you, none of my wealthy friends do they never say how much money they earn. They never say how much money they have. Now, generally speaking, for the folks who are, you know, in certain kinds of positions, their their net worth is public. You know, you can Google and find their net worth, or you can Google and learn about certain deals that they've done. The wealthier they are, the more opaque things are, and it's harder to figure out what they're really worth. But if you keep your eyes open, you can see that they ball in like Spalding. But one thing that is very lower class, it indicates that you probably came from poverty, not nobility, is when you tell people how much money you have or how much money you're earning, and you're getting specific like that. It's, it's one thing to say that you're wealthy as a bit of credibility uh, because you're talking about wealth, but this is a tacky lower class thing. And this is what you're going to see with a lot of internet new money, you have folks who are unrefined, uneducated, unsophisticated sophisticated, and now they have a microphone in front of them. So you basically have imbeciles talking to uh, people who are young and uh, inexperienced. And it's an unfortunate thing. You have the blind leading the blind, but let us carry on. For those interested, I did link the Bosch University in the chat, so it's just easier for them to get to. Yes, indeed. And the reason I put those things in Boss University, I want you to get the wealth. I want you to have the health. I want you to have good relationships, and I want you to look good all the while you're doing it. I don't want you to you know, be wealthy and be unrefined and people look down upon you. Your peers look down upon you because you commit faux pas, which is to say you do things that are not socially looked upon well in that income class. We have Othon said, this is why I support the big homie because he's not a YouTube millionaire. Preach. I myself own several companies, so I appreciate all the knowledge you give to better my skills on all topics. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Yes, indeed. And, and remember, this girl is earning this money. She didn't say how. Presumably, it's on YouTube. And I, I shouldn't say, girl, this is a lady boy, but carrying on. Lee, and by end of the year, we're expecting to reach 50K USD per month. A couple of years okay. ago. Now, she says she keeps referring to we. Who is the we? What is she speaking? Arabic? This is the royal we. Who is the we? That's an important thing to understand, team, because if it's you and eight other people, well, $50,000 a month is not much, at least not in my book, for eight people splitting a month. That ain't much. No, that ain't much. So first off, how are you earning it? Who is we? Huh? And you're probably earning it on YouTube. So is your advice to tell everyone to become a YouTuber, which is one of the hardest things possible to do? We're going to get into it. And let's hear the things that she's talking about, because I want to let you know if these are real or unrealistic. I actually have a separate list of my own, because I want you guys to be able to get some money. You heard me? I talk about prosperity. I want you to prosper. I love to see people winning. And shout out to Wisdom, too, because he's a good brother with a, a good heart, and I see he's always encouraging. Those are the kind of people you want to be around. To go, I used to think that only way to make a lot of money was becoming a doctor, engineer, yeah, or we, we don't care. Housing income on the side, or you're looking to start a new side hustle and maybe eventually quit your nine to five okay, job. Okay, she's saying things that are um, 
thread. She's giving us threadbare ideas, which we've heard many times. Uh, what's really important to note is her appearance, uh, the, the appearance of this lady boy. And then secondly, to note that the English is not excellent. There's no humor. This person is completely robotic. This could have easily been AI doing this. There's no personality. So first off, this individual has a successful YouTube channel, but there's nothing about them that would indicate that they're you know, extraordinarily good at what they're doing. The reason I point this out to you, I want you to pay attention, is because you have people who tell you, oh, you can do what I do, which is not always true. For example, there's a minuscule population of people who can speak the way I speak. I'm aware. I would not tell you to do what I do. Secondly, with her, there's a minuscule population of people who look as good as a lady boy who's had, you know, $30,000 worth of surgery. And hence, she's getting viewership from her appearance. That's an important thing to consider. Riley said, have you ever used Upwork or Fiverr to, for marketing or web development for a business? Any thoughts? Also, how long in months? Did it take for you to achieve five to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube? Peace to the saints. Number one, I've been in the tech business so long that I used Upwork before it was Upwork. I think it was called Elance back in the day. That's how long I've been at this. You know, I didn't come here yesterday. I've used Fiverr from a number of, for a number of things. Generally, my marketing spin, I like to keep in-house. I either would hire a marketing person or I would use my own marketing know-how. Marketing is something where it's hard to track if the dollars that you're spending are returning dollars back in sales. I'm always cautious of a marketing spend. A lot of people say they can do marketing. Very few actually can. Marketing is an increasingly technical pursuit. I usually like to hire technologists to do marketing, not marketers. Secondly, with regards to web development, yes, certainly you can hire from these two uh, sites. I think Upwork is preferred over Fiverr with regards to hiring this kind of talent. Furthermore, you also want to be cautious of where these folks come from with love for all of mankind. And you all know I travel the world and I have much respect for people of every race, ethnicity, religion, et cetera. But in my experience, which is lengthy and has breadth, I would never hire a web developer from India. I would never hire a web developer from Pakistan. I would preference those in Eastern Europe. They can not only develop, but they can also create good design for your web applications. Lastly, when you're hiring Eastern Europeans and Russians, the beautiful thing is if they cannot do something or they don't want to do something for some reason, they will tell you no. People in India are lovely people, very spiritual and pleasant. They will never tell you no. They'll try it and often you know, they won't hit the mark if you're doing things that are very technical. If you have something that's very inexpensive, it's a web application. Yes, you can hire someone in India. If it's a mobile application, I wouldn't recommend it. And know that if you hire someone in India, the timelines will often be uh, fuzzy rather than finite. And you were correct. It was Elance before Upwork. Thank you. Yeah, I know my stuff. I appreciate that. And I always ask to make sure that I'm correct because I really want you to have accurate information. You know, there's every now and then I'll, maybe I'll misstate something and it, I'll take the video down if I misstated it because I want you all to have the truth. The truth is important. We're at a loss for the truth today. Description and this video is sponsored by Scopes because I believe it's genuinely helpful and enjoyable for video. To make things easier to understand is not like that assist. The key concept is active involvement. To writing the months of suffering on it's important market. You are protecting your wealth and giving yourself the potential to earn. Okay, so she's basically wasting our time defining what passive income is. If you don't know what passive income is, you're, maybe you're a little bit behind. That's fine. You can Google that easily. Um, what I want you all to understand is that people who are not very bright, they tend to engage in information rather than wisdom. You know, if someone asks me a question that starts off with what is, usually what is is going to lead you to a definition or it's going to lead you to something you can easily find on Google or Wikipedia, dictionary.com. What is a blah, blah, blah. What is and blah, blah, blah. It's a waste of time. It's information. When you speak to someone like myself or you speak to an expert, you need to get wisdom. You need to find something you can't find on Google or YouTube. This woman is just babbling, giving you an actual definition of passive income as though you can't easily find that. And we're two minutes, 30 just seconds in, you've received no, no value. There's a cash out from Ken. You'll be able to give him his money's worth by reading it much more than I will. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Ken writes, props to the big homie, creating Marquettlevania. Yes, indeed. So you did much better. I appreciate that. Let me get you some practice, though. Lead programs that you can join for free. Once you join, you can promote their products by sharing special links. When some okay, so here's the first opportunity she is sharing, which is you know affiliate marketing. You know, one of many um, 
types of uh, marketing schemes or even pyramid schemes, which is to say that uh, person A has a product, right? And you you sell person A's product, you spread the word about their product, and you're like, hey, click my referral code. And then once someone buys the product through your referral code, then you get a little percentage of the proceeds. So maybe you get 5%, 10%, 20%, things like that. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have a following, then your referral code is almost never going to get clicked. Almost never is anyone going to buy something through your referral code if you don't have a following. Maybe it happens once, maybe twice, maybe three times. But if you don't have a big following, your referral code is never going to get punched enough such that you can survive with that as a significant income. Furthermore, let's talk about money. This is what I know. The more you spread yourself thin across a number of activities, you exhaust yourself mentally and otherwise. It's silliness. It's tiring. You're splitting attention. Focus is critical to success. So she's telling you to focus on a bunch of small things that are largely inner, irrelevant and ineffective. And most importantly, they don't lead to a longer term outcome or goal that you should have defined. You listen to people like this who are peons. This is basically a bimbo tell you how to get money when in actuality, she all that she earns is from her physical appearance. I'm going to do a separate video on that. It's called guy code, which is basically to stop guys acting like animals, which is what made these, these 304s wealthy and made you broke. Yes, that's how it all happened. But the point is this. She's telling you to be an affiliate marketer, which you're not going to make money unless you have a very large following that trusts you. You have to have a large following and that following has to trust you, meaning they have to believe your link is real and that your link that they're clicking has not increased the price of the good significantly such that they'd find it at a lower, lower price if they didn't use a referral link and if they bought direct. Go ahead. Uh, Gravity writes, can we super chat videos for you to review? If it's relating to this, yeah, and if it's a you know reasonably uh, you know you send the timestamp, sure, you can uh, super chat a video to be reviewed if it's relating to this session. Or if it's relating to another topic or trending news, uh, that can be done as well. Someone clicks on your link and makes a purchase, you earn a commission. Getting started is super easy. You just sign up for a program. Now, one thing she's not going to do is she's not going to give you an example. One thing you'll always see me do if you buy any of my courses, you buy any of my lectures, you buy any of my, my colleagues or my friends' lectures, they always will give you a case study because a case study is an example that makes things clear. And that's what you want. So you can understand, well, what is my money really going to look like? So for example, say you become an affiliate marketer for, for this product, which is actually no longer available. Uh, say, so say you become an affiliate marketer for this, right? And this is a water bottle that keeps your liquid hot or cold. So 24 hours at whatever temperature it went into the bottle at. Okay, cool. So this is a $10 bottle. You become an affiliate marketer, you make 10% uh, percent of each purchase. So if someone buys this $10 bottle for every time it's sold, you make $1, 10%. 10% is a good take for a product that's not yours. And all you have to do is share the link. But here's the thing. You're making one freaking dollar every go. How many of these things do you have to sell to be able to eat each month? You got to sell a tremendous amount. You don't know that many people and you don't have that kind of a following. So she's giving things that are clearly ineffective and it's a waste of time for 99.9% .9 of people. What you have to realize is sometimes you're watching content and the person who created the content did it simply for the sake of running advertisements to you. They didn't do significant research. They didn't write out notes like Marquette Devon Burton. They didn't think through what they're about to say to you. They just need you to watch. So they're going to say something even though it's not going to help you. So I want you all to know being an affiliate marketer will not help you prove, improve your economic position. And most importantly, this woman's talking through a video about how to make money, but she's not asked anyone to define their long-term goal. She's not talked anything about skilling up or being focused with your eyes on the prize and making sure that you have alignment today with, in terms of your activities and education, your people and places and positions so that it all aligns to where you're trying to get to. Because success is a destination that you have to navigate to. You don't just end up there on accident. You surely don't end up there following every distraction that some foolish fake guru puts in front of you. This is a distraction. I'm going to do the people a favor because your team has been busy. That is actually still for sale. I linked it. But oh, this it will is be, for sale. It will okay. be coming off because, as he said, it's not supposed to be for sale. Yeah, that's not supposed but to be But I'm for doing sale. them okay. a favor and I gave them that's a chance. Love. I appreciate that. You you did help the people out. And I saw somebody in there said that was a cold, cold bottle. 
So now, now's your chance. Now's your chance. And uh, the chance will be ex expiring soon. Just making sure of the times of my next meetings. Okay, great. And if you guys have questions, I encourage you again, send your questions, your comments in now early. From like Amazon affiliates and paste the links into your blog, social media, YouTube page, <laughs> newsletter, or whatever platform you're using. The trick is earn a substantial income. Maintenance is super easy. You just need to paste links. Every year I make like a little bit of money. Okay, so so this girl is a complete dirt bag, right? So she she literally used the word easy. She said, this is easy. Maintenance is easy. This is easy. She has over a million subscribers. How much money did she make on her commissions? She made a little over $1,000 on commissions. Um, commissions and bounty, she still didn't even crack $2,000. She didn't crack $2,000 and she has over a million subscribers. How far off are you from a million subscribers? I'm 10% of the way. Many of you guys don't even have 10 subscribers on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. She got a million and only made 2,000 in that month. Not even 2,000. That's my point. The numbers, the details, and the integrity of the speaker money from my affiliate links by simply mentioning the products I use and income once created these products can be sold now she's talking about digital goods here so in terms of digital goods you, know, you might have an ebook you might have you know an nft you might have various things that are digital virtual goods and the problem again is that you have to have a significant audience to sell things in general but especially digital goods so and also those things that you're the author of when it's your ebook it's your nft you have to have a reputation and a following. So the problem, and this is consistent among those who never have done legitimate business. If they were scammers, if they were YouTube gurus, if they were pornographers, meaning, meaning selling vice and selling sex, these people can never teach you business because they don't understand business. They don't understand markets and they don't understand how to put a product in the marketplace and earn legitimately. We're going to get into this. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. I could tell people, you know, they think they're going to soak this game up for free. Let me go ahead and wrap this up. I got business. I got I got six figure plays I can make today. Um, P. Wayne's supporting the work. Let me just give you guys the knowledge for free. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of free knowledge for you guys. I'm gonna get get up out of here because I got a couple racks I can make and by a couple racks. I mean, six figures plus. Here we go. Now, um, so under the unrealistic category, we're just going to do this a little bit faster. And remember, once you guys do start making money, make sure that people follow the maxim I share with you, which is pay what you owe. You dig? Pay what you owe. And shout out to the members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center and all of the folks who support the work, the folks who are always consistent coming in early. We do appreciate you. Now, let me rush through this real quick. Unrealistic. First off, when someone tells you that you can make money online or you can make money remotely, generally not true for most people especially if you're talking about outside of the context of a nine to five or a proper corporation. The first category of things that are unrealistic that are commonly recommended to you that we will debunk here is uh, things that require audience or a significant marketing lift. Number one is merch. Uh, most of you will not be able to sell merch and here's why. Merchandise requires brand usually or it requires some significant connection to the product, be it a heartfelt connection or something that is unique style-wise that creates a tribe effect, or it has to be a wildly unique product. Most of you are not creating products that are wildly unique. They don't have significant technology in the clothes. Um, so going into merch is a difficult business for a number of reasons. Number one, there's a lot of returns, so there's significant customer service. But you got to get sales even to get returns. Most of you won't be getting significant sales. Merch is a horrible business. Also, because especially if you look at body shapes like women, for example, they have radically different body shapes. That's why you get the high returns. The sizing is always off. And if you're looking at female customers versus male customers, the data indicates that women are much more inclined to return the product to you. So you're not going to get much value out of a merch uh, situation. We have Joshua sent $50. Baller alert. He said, peace to the saints. Great topic. In the process of hiring virtual assistants in the Philippines as part of my real estate team. That's what's up. A lot of money to be made on flips. Currently on two deals, one in San Diego Hello. and another in Miami. Hello. Thank you for your inspiration. That's prime real estate. That's not prime real estate in America. That's prime real estate on the planet Earth. Shout out. Ballerism. I'll leave that up for a second. Beautiful we have thing. Ken came back on Cash App and said, can this be a continuous segment? 
Um, I only do continuous segments that people support well because um, I try as a businessman, I try not to interpret what people value. Right. So, you know, I try to look at a mix between attendance and, you know, super chats and, you know, and say like, okay, well, people really appreciate this or they're really engaged with this. And so if that's the case, and yes, absolutely, it can be continuous. And I really like this because I love business. I love creating products. I love making money. And I love seeing people successful. So it'll all be about how people support the, the work and how much they appreciate it. But that's kind of how I assess if it should be continuous. We have Henny Benny came in on Cash App Shout and said, Henny. hey, Marquette, it's Big Duke. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Carrying on. So merch bad idea. Let me also give you a way to think about product, right? So for example, question to all of you, the knives and the spoons and the forks in your kitchen, do you know what brand they are? Do you know what brand the knives, spoons and forks in the kitchen are? No idea. No idea. That's because the brand doesn't matter whatsoever. Conversely, if you look at the clothing that you're wearing. Do you know what the brands are? Absolutely. You, you look at your sneakers. Do you know what the brand is? Absolutely. Because brand figure figures prominently into clothing purchases. Hence, when you start a new merch brand it, or merch uh, line, it has no brand. There's no equity. That being the case, it's going to be very difficult to sell. Secondly, um, flipping furniture. People talk about you know buying furniture at secondhand stores or, or thrift stores and then refurbishing the furniture and then reselling it for a markup on eBay or different websites. Well, this is something that requires significant skill. So there's a skill gap because most of you are not Amish. You don't know how to build furniture, nor do you know how to restore furniture. So it's something that's quite unrealistic. And if you try to do it, you'd have to pay money to learn or you'd have to pay your time to study to figure that out. Go ahead. Okay, we have Eli said, hello, Saint. What's your opinion on drop shipping? I want to get started, but I'm the type to get obsessive and go all in. So I want to make sure it's worth it. So who better to ask than the Saint? Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. I actually spoke about this. I believe it was in conference two. I spoke specifically about the difference between real business and drop shipping. You know, there's nothing terribly wrong with drop shipping. The downside is that you don't have full control over your business. You don't have full access to your data. You often don't have the addresses of your customers in some cases. And most importantly, your profit is being split more than it should be. You're dealing with a middleman. So you're not a proper businessman, you know, which is to say, like, do you want to be Frank Lucas where people buy wholesale from you? You know, they, they like you're the guy or do you want to be the middleman? You know, whereas you bought from Frank Lucas and Frank Lucas bought from these other people. So there's so many other people in between you and the product and you and the customer. You're just one of many. It's not really your business. The profit margins are low. Check out uh, conference footage too, not only to figure out why drop shipping is not ideal, there's nothing wrong with it. And then secondly, to figure out well, what is ideal. We have Donnell said, what are your thoughts on developing a SaaS product with no code, low code applications such as Webflow, Stripe, Bubble, based on leveraging the chat GPT AI? I'd love to see it. I'm, I mean, if you think you can do that, um, please screen record it from beginning to end. And I'd love to document the process of it. If you can create a, a, a web application, software as a service, whatever you would try to create, and it actually presents a product that is functional, um, I'd love to go through. I'll go through with you and, and we'll document it, which in the process will give you a tremendous amount of PR for what you're doing. But I do not believe it is possible, having been in this game for a long time. And number two, like when you're saying Stripe, you're talking about the payment process, right? You Stripe across a number of different businesses. And usually Stripe requires significant uh, development when you're integrating it. You know, Stripe might give you some code snippets, but you have to be fairly technical to get that done. I don't know what your background is, but uh, th this is this is fairy telling my opinion. But I don't know everything, and that's why I'm saying I'm open to if you can actually do it. Screen record the whole thing, talk through it, um, make sure you have a good revenue model, and then hey, I'll help you promote it because I'd love to do a series on it if it's a real thing. Um, now remember, right now I am doing the uh, the practicum, which is essentially a course that you participate in, so you actually figure out how to create an application and monetize it, which means that you actually the whole way through had a proper revenue model. Most people in the software as a service, uh, web application, technology space, they don't have proper business models. They're not making a penny. Um, uh, shout out to, uh, thank you for adding that link there uh, for those who want to join the practicum, which means you actually figure out how to do things. You get real experience, things you can actually put on a resume.
We have Cole came in on Cash Up. He said, Holy cow. I believe he's going on the men's trip. So we also have Joshua that sent the baller alert yes. going on the men's trip. Yes. Ken is going. So quite a few people it's gonna that be are a supporting. Vibe. Yes, indeed. Um, but Cole said, Needed to hear this. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Yeah, and if you guys like this as a, a weekly, whether we, we do this specific format or have a different name, but if we're just talking about money and business weekly, we can do that. Certainly for the members um, for this month, I have a number of sessions that are going to be just like this, but more practical, more case study. Like, hey, here's a specific business or a specific product. Here's what the numbers look like, because that's what you really need. Um, digital goods. These are things that often are going to require you to have a following. So that's not realistic. Uh, furthermore, you have the unlikely category of how you can make money online or remotely, one of which is called sell your photos. So all of you who think you're amateur photographers, you could sell your photos to Getty's, uh, what's it called? Getty, oh, Getty Images or uh, iPhoto or iStock and all these online image storehouses. You can sell your photos to them. Well, generally, they're not going to buy them, number one. These, these are unlikely things. Generally, they're not going to buy them. Uh, and if they do buy them, they're going to give you 18 bucks for this photo, 23 bucks for that photo. So they're rejecting 99% of your photos and they're giving you 13 to 18 bucks per one that they do like. And usually you're not getting royalties off of it because they're purchasing full ownership of the image. It, it's just like completely ridiculous. Now, here's another opportunity. OnlyFans, you know, for the guys and the gals. Well, turns out that OnlyFans is also something that's unlikely to make you successful. Let's do a quick Google search. What is the average income? Or really, we want the, is it called the modal in the modal income? Average income, which means we don't, you know, the median, it's the median income. We want the median income. I'm just do a quick search for you all. Average income, OnlyFans. The average income from an OnlyFans person, meaning someone who sold their soul to the devil, someone who is putting their and selling their integrity, they're selling their integrity, which they can never get back, is a whopping $180 per month. So you think if that if your next door neighbor, that little blonde girl next door to you, if she can only make $180 a month showing her coochie, and God knows what vile things she's doing on her OnlyFans, if she only make $180 a month showing her body parts and engaging in pornography, you think you're about to sell images to Getty that anyone could have taken a photo of and probably someone has already taken a photo of or we can AI generate a photo, you're mistaken. Oh, and by the way, OnlyFans girls, you're also mistaken. You're going to be broke. Most of you are broke. $180 a month. It is pathetic. And that is the reality of things. So this whole make money online, make money re remotely, unrealistic. Um, and by unrealistic, even if you're able to do it, it's just such a low amount of money that you're making that that's the point. You'll never, you'll never, in most of these cases, you'll never get to blow up. You'll never blow up like flipping furniture. You're never going to blow up flipping furniture, selling digital goods, your ebook. You're probably never going to blow up from that. Especially when you got things like chat GPT might not be competent at writing a proper uh, software as a service business, but it can surely write a book. Yes, indeed. So these are things that we really need to think about, and I'm glad I can warn you away from it. Here's another thing. We have Gravity Films came in on Cash Shop. He said link for review is in the chat. I don't see it a lot of times. They it don't let suppresses you put it. Links. Um, so send the link to the email on the bottom of the screen. And if it applies to this video, we'll do it now. And if not, it'll be at a later date. For correct? trending news or whatever's yeah. appropriate. Yes, indeed. Another thing is, you know, Make sure that you're doing things, and you'll hear me say this a lot, you want to learn about brick making from brick makers. Uh, would I trust, and let me just pop this, uh, this lady boy's face back on screen, would I trust this 19-year-old uh, lady boy on learning how to make money through varied means? No, for a number of reasons. Number one, you're 19. Number two, you not even cracked a million dollars. Number three, you only know one industry, which is YouTube. That's all you know. You don't know anything else. Number four, even your success on YouTube didn't come from unique talent. It, it came from all these surgeries you got. Number five, I guess four is enough, isn't it? Heels In came in via Venmo. Shout out to Heels In. The reason I say this is because you hear a lot of things that are frankly untrue. I am in the technology industry still to this day. Most of my good friends are in the technology industry. None of them have said, hey, Marquette, I fired all of my developers. 
I can now use chat GPT to write code. I'm still waiting. No one said that. Like, trust me, like we talk about business. So you hear things that just are frankly not true. I've not heard of, you know, chat GPT being, empowering someone to create a business in the most competitive industry on earth. Ken is back. This is his third cash out. Shout out to Ken. He said, thanks for reviewing popular videos on business. Oh, yes, indeed. I didn't even realize this one was popular, but I guess, I mean, given that she has a million subscribers, I mean, everything she does at some level is popular, huh? I am re reviewing popular concepts, though, so that you guys don't lose out. Here's another thing. Unrealistic, being a virtual assistant. Now, this is the important thing you have to consider. If you live in the developed world, being a virtual assistant is not going to work very well for you. I'll tell you why. Well, it's not going to work very well because virtual means you never show up. So why would I hire you, random white girl in Wisconsin, for $25 an hour or a random goofy liberal white girl in New York for $35 an hour or a random, unrealistic, untalented white girl in uh, Southern California for $40 an hour, whatever foolish price you're asking, which is ranging between $20 to $40 per hour, and you never show up. When If you're not going to show up, I could hire someone in the Philippines or in South Africa. And I can pay them $4 an hour, $3 an hour, $5 an hour, $6, $7 an hour tops. Or I could even hire someone in Eastern Europe and pay them $10 an hour. And they probably are more attractive than you, more timely and more ambitious and better educated and realistic. So that would be completely foolish for you to think you're, you can be a virtual assistant. Now, that, uh, that same logic applies to another field. I recently was going to hire a video editor in person because I want uh, someone in person who can sometimes do some video recording, but more importantly, do video editing. And I want the con convenience of being able to say, hey, man, sit down right here. Uh, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Clip this, clip this. I want this to be like that. I just want to do it in person. They can go to the next room, you know, whip that up. And, you know, at the end of the day, we can review footage. I like to work in person. That's my favorite modality. Now, a young man that reached out to me on LinkedIn several times in regards to this role, and I was going to pay well, paying someone in Las Vegas. And then he says, uh, and I said, hey, give me a work sample. He gave me a work sample. I said, hey, here's some cash for your work sample. Just because I'm a considerate person, I respect people's time. I value people's time. You heard me? Yeah, I don't, I don't assume anyone's doing something because they like me. I am a man. And I grew up in reality. I never think someone's done something because they like me, although I am a likable person. So I always compensate people. And in this case, it was not even appropriate or necessary. So I, I said, hey, here's some cash. And then he messages me. He says, yeah, I know the role is at this rate per hour. But if I do a one-off job, then I charge this amount. And I'm over here like, all right, you're fired. You're not even hired, but you're already fired. Why? Well, he's fired because little dummy, I was not giving you a one-off job. I was giving you what's called a performance task. I give you a task to see if you can perform such that you can be hired, you idiot. That's number one. Number two, if you're already annoying me and giving me problems and you're not even hired, I can only assume you're going to be an effeminate, annoying personality. So there's no way I'm going to hire you. And number three, you dimwitted moron. If I gave you that task via LinkedIn, that was a virtual task. If I wanted someone to be able to do virtual tasks, you idiot, I would hire someone in the Philippines who's smarter than you and better looking than you and can do the task at a mere fraction of the cost and will never complain. In fact, they will say, Mr. Burton, thank you. You're paying me twice as much as someone else would. And I would. I'd pay them $13 an hour because it's still a lot cheaper than you, American dummy. I say that to say this, being a video editor in America and expecting a good salary if you're working remotely is not realistic. You're remote, which means you could be in Latvia, you could be in Vietnam, you could be in Sudan, you could be in Philippines. So you have to compete with those salaries if you're remote. This is why you need to talk to a real businessman because I've been to those places. I know the salaries. I've hired in those places. This dumb broad who God knows where this dumb broad is, who's preaching this nonsense. Um, she's fooling you guys into thinking you can be a virtual assistant or a virtual video editor. No, you cannot because you're going to have to operate based on the wages uh, in the third world. And you don't have third world level of expenses around you. Okay. We have fully coolly said peace to the saints. I'm glad I caught this live. I had plans doing a digital e-comic book. Thank you for saving me the trouble. And let me even go deeper. And shout to Fooly Cooley. We, uh, he was here at, was that conference three? I think it was conference three. Yeah. yeah. Shout to Fooly Cooley. I got to stop stepping on that cord right there. This is really important to understand. And he's a young man. Yeah. 
I remember when I was in my 20s, I had a successful tech business. I had offices around the world. I had cash. I was the guy. I had outperformed my peers, done everything faster, done school faster, done being a boss faster, done international business faster. I had a real story to tell. My English professor that I had when I was 16, professor, not teacher, she kept pressuring me to write a book. I didn't want to write one because I didn't think it would sell. I was already successful. I was the first of this, first of that. I was already successful. I had a story that was worth hearing. Kid born to a father in prison, a mother suffering crack cocaine addiction, raised in part by a grandmother who had dementia, was teaching me and saying crazy things in a ghetto that's violent, drug infested, makes it out of that into corporate success, did all that without drinking a drip of alcohol ever puffing on a cigarette or drugs, never catching a case. Wow, that's a story to tell. I still did not want to write the book because I did not think it would sell. What that should tell you is as a businessman, I said, um, people know me and I've been successful, but that's not enough to get a book sold. And if it is enough to get a couple books sold, it's not enough to sell enough books that it would be worth my business time. You see, if I make $800 an hour doing what I do as a boss, as a CEO, if I were to put in all the hours it takes to write that book, am I going to get that money back? No, no, I, I would not make that much money writing a book, especially as a CEO. Now, as a YouTuber, I can write a book. Yeah, it's more likely to sell. It's a lot more likely to sell, a lot more likely. So the point is this, those kind of goods will mostly only sell if you have some kind of extraordinary backing and marketing know-how or a pre-existing audience that you can access. So you're very wise. Now going the ebook route is a little smarter and comic books theoretically would take less time than it would for you to write your whole life story. Like mine took 10 years. It's a masterwork. You can get the black box on Amazon, uh, you know, on Amazon prime within a couple uh, within 24 hours or a couple of days, depending on where you are. Um, so yes, Maybe we did save you some time, but if it's relatively quick to deploy, like a comic book, theoretically, it's a shorter book, it's quicker to deploy. It's not a terrible idea, but I'd probably wait till I have the following or access to someone who has the following. Hey, there is the guy that sent the cash app. I don't want to say his name, Gravity Film. So there's a link in your email. Okay. It does appear to be related to this topic. Brilliant. Let's and there's two timestamps. All right. And the link is in the cash app? No, he sent a separate email. I left it unread so you could I see. easily. Thank you. Okay, first one is at 1413. Okay, so we're going to 14 minutes, 13 seconds. Okay, let me go ahead and share the screen. All right, let's hear what this fellow has to say. Now, first off, I'll tell you this, um, and let me enlarge this so you can see the text on it. it in the upper left corner, it reads, uh, real, quote, realistic, uh, street smart. So first off, uh, you don't need street smarts in business. Um, so I'm already suspicious. And I tend to think like maybe he's trying to hustle someone. And then it writes, it reads step-by-step -step guide. That's good. Step-by-step -step is great. It says how to make $100,000 per year. First off, they put the dollar sign at the end. I don't, I don't know why that is. I tend to think this person must be foreign. They're not an American. I, I tend to not trust foreigners. And I'll tell you why. Because they're talking to an American audience about dollars. They put the freaking dollar sign at the end. So this person is probably not a Western European by any means. They were not educated in the United States. And they're foreign. And generally, when you look at the scams that are occurring in America from a like when they're executed using technology, it's usually coming from abroad. And it makes perfect sense because the incomes are lower. Um, so you got to do what you got to do. Um, and then it has X, no investments, no BS. So it's saying you don't need any money to start, which usually is not the case, no matter what you want to do. And it says no BS. So we're going to get into this. So right now, that's my interpretation. I want to share my thinking with you because it's important for you guys to be able to soak up the thinking of an experienced wise man so that you can use this pro uh, thought process. Shout out to Anonymous Professor. He was also at our third conference. Yep, we both had a pleasure of meeting him. Yes, indeed. He writes, peace to the saints, prosperity and blessings to you, Marquette, Bridget, and all of the saints. 
You say who you are. More importantly, you've proven who you are. I appreciate that. As a as real as it possibly can get. I recently purchased Boss University. Shout out. Yes, indeed. I appreciate that. And, and that's a great um course. And I, I really feel like it's a journey going through Boss University because it addresses so many parts of the human being. It talks about happiness, talks about self-improvement, talks about uh dealing with women, talks about earning in business. It's the most complete course I think you'll find. Did you say baller alert? I don't think baller alert. There you Thank go. you. We have Dedrick came in with $50 on Cash App. Another baller alert. And said message in the chat. And make a note. We, well, I'll we'll make this a Dedrick weekly. Too. I'll make this a I'll make this a weekly one. Maybe it seems okay. like they might like this. And again, we've met Dedrick. So all baller alert. Yes, indeed. We met the family. He writes, if you follow the ways of the assassin, you will prosper. Jabrizi, when you watch this, where is quote, how to get a bag out of her part four? Patiently waiting. <laughs> Carry on. Okay, so so let's see what this guy has to say. Cocaine isn't cheap. It's expensive. That's true. Gotta make money. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, our next objective is to find a service that we can offer where we can charge $100 and deliver those services. Okay, now here's the thing. I want you guys to pay close attention to my ability to analyze. i never seen this video in my entire life. It was just sent to me by one of the saints right now in real time. I read the language on the title and I said, this is by a foreigner. And you hear the accent, this is a foreigner, which there's nothing wrong with that. But it does put up my antenna in terms of me being scammed. Secondly, I said, this is not a Western European because generally Western Europeans, they're better with English, especially if we're talking about Germans, French. Um, this person is not Western European from their accent. So here we go. And then lastly, you know, we have to acknowledge that, you know, some things you don't want to invest your time and money into, but if you're going to tell people about how to make a hundred thousand um, dollars, I don't want to see you uh, wearing a Walmart suit and I want to see you looking a little bit more neat. I don't want you to look like you are waking up from a hangover and then you just like kind of rushed into your, your job uh, as an accountant at a firm that's on the brink of uh, bankruptcy. So there's that. So I was correct about those predictions. Now, I want you guys to notice that because with experience, you become sophisticated. You can see the world. You can see through BS. And it's ironic that he put no BS in the title because I'm already sensing BS. So it's passed, preferably in less than an hour. For example, there is a stump grinder service. So basically, the tree companies, they cut the tree, and then there is a stump. Removing stump costs about $150 to $300. Well, let's take an average $200. Okay, this is good. I'm glad people sent me this. We should maybe make this a weekly session because there's so much I can teach, and this is what I do. Number one, I always say you want to preference product over service, which is to say when you utilize uh, yourself as a service provider, you're providing service directly through your own hand and your own efforts, well, then you're going to exhaust yourself. You're, you're only getting paid based on your time. You're exchanging time for money. Now, this is the lower level. You can't scale this up infinitely. infinitely. You'll almost never get to the million dollar mark, which really is not the high mark considering what you can get to. So uh, not impressed. Wait. So he's talking about uh, manual labor, labor right now, but we're going to play it because there may be some value here, but we're going to keep it going. We have Booz sent a cash up. He said, just wrote something in the chat, which is on the screen. CPMs for biz op on YouTube is like, I'm assuming that was like 40 X. So these people on it can get 500 USD with 10,000 views. I don't know if that's true. Um, this channel that I'm speaking to you on is not monetized at all, which is it's, it's supported by you. You heard me just like your local church. If you think it's a good church, they're preaching a good word. It's supported by the people who show up. Their channels are supported by the Google corporation. Ours are not, but I've seen the the payment. Um, I don't think you're getting that much money for 10,000 views. I don't think it's that good um, based on what I've seen. I hope it is. You know, I like to see people prosper, but I don't think it's that good. He writes, that's rent money, so they're incentivized to make misleading videos. They're making good money. I don't think they're making it that, that good, but yes, they're absolutely incentivized, and I've warned people many times that when you find those uh, people who are behaving strangely, like you're like, huh, I wonder why they're doing this. Consider, are they motivated by greed? Are they motivated by affection? And affection is far reaching, meaning from compliments, attention to intercourse. And are they motivated by fear? Fear, greed, affection. 
Those are the three devils that control mankind. There are very few people who are beyond that. So yes, you're right. They they do lie. There's no doubt about that. It's going to take you 20 minutes to remove a stamp if you have a stamp grinding machine. So if you have uh, six, seven clients a day, you're going to be making 1400 minus all the expenses. You Is this guy serious right now? So he basically just told you to become a stump grinder. Now, here's the thing. My first question as a businessman is, okay, so you have one company that goes and they cut the trees. They cut the trees. They just leave the stump, apparently. So my first question is, why is it that the company that cuts the trees doesn't remove the stump if removing the stump is a need of the consumer? Because the person who has the yard with the tree stump in it, they're paying you to cut the tree down. I, if they don't want the stump there, I don't think they'd mind paying you a couple extra bucks to remove the stump and you're already there. So you have a unique advantage to just take the stump out, especially if it's going to be as profitable as this guy says, right? So this is already suspicious. Furthermore, how many of you guys have the heavy equipment to cut down tree stumps? And depending on size, some of you just might not even be able to operate that heavy equipment. You might be a small person, low weight, female, what have you. So I'm already suspicious of this. You're going to be making thousand dollars a day. Now, the problem with this business the stamp grinding machine costs about twenty thousand dollars. In addition, it has the same problem as a lawn mowing business. Well, but the problem with those landscaping businesses is, is that then you're gonna need to have a trailer to drag the stamp grinder around. Then you're gonna need to have a truck. Did he say how long uh, for each um, timestamp to listen to it? Uh, no, he just said two timestamps. Okay, so um, I'll just give this a, a little bit more time, then I'll go on to the next timestamp. The sun. You have to breathe with this like stamp grinding thing is like all over your face. Plus this business is seasonal. If you live in the Northern states or in the Northern parts of the country, like you're not going to have a lot of jobs during winter. Are there any other services where we can charge also hundred, two hundred dollars per hour? Okay. So this guy's not very intelligent, you know, so I would never follow him because number one, I've sensed that the IQ is not you know, significant. And the reason I say that is because he wasted our time giving us counter examples. He, he wasted our time giving us examples of things that won't work. Hence, I'm not incentivized or excited to continue listening to him. And we're already you know, 15 minutes in, knowing that audiences generally have low attention span. You, you really want to hit them with some sort of value. And so far, I've not gained any value. I've only been suspicious of why he leaves the hair on the sides and won't just shave it all off. So we're going to go on to the next timestamp on this guy. And the second timestamp was... 35 minutes, 26 seconds. Thank you. And let's see. 35 minutes, 26 seconds. While you're doing that, we have Kareem Glows came in on Cash App and said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Good to see you, Kareem. It's been a little while. So your free clients are actually not free. To get free clients, you have to sacrifice your time. So it's basically what I do here on this channel. I'm okay, creating... so this could be a language barrier. Clearly, English is not his first language, but he says to get free clients, you have to sacrifice your time. So free, mind you, generally nothing is free. And if you're utilizing your time, then they're not free. So this language is oxymoronic, uh, or the concepts are oxymoronic. It just doesn't make sense. So I want you all to be cautious that, again, learn brick making from brick makers. Uh, this fellow doesn't appear to be good at much. He's not good at dressing. He's not good at presenting himself. He's not great at English. And I'm not saying this as a polyglot or someone who speaks a bunch of languages fluently, but I speak the language of money fluently, and English is the language of money. I say that having been around the world, there's only one market in which English doesn't work well. And in that market, I had translators there because I was the goddamn money man. You hear me? Uh, but this guy doesn't do anything well. I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't buy from him. Um, I don't expect that he's about to say anything intelligent whatsoever. Um, so I would highly recommend that you stay away from this fellow. Okay. We have Parker said, is there a way to add another hundred thousand a year with a side hustle when you have a job making a hundred thousand a year? Well, number one, anything is possible, but I don't know why people have adopted the language and the thinking of internet dimwits. What's with the side hustle concept? Why are we so obsessed with side hustles? If you're talking about you earn a hundred thousand and you're trying to make an additional hundred thousand on the side, well, that would be parallel to what you're doing as your main job. So at that point, is a side hustle a side hustle? It's a proper income. So one, linguistically, that that doesn't make sense. Secondly, there's there's no goal to have a side hustle. The goal is to make a bunch of money, and you want to do that 
through whatever means is most appropriate and splitting your attention is not wise, especially if you don't have a team and you don't have a lot of money and you're not like a person who's extraordinarily gifted mentally and has a high tolerance of stress and significant emotional intelligence. Most people don't have it within them to do three or four things competently at a level that uh, will cause them to get paid well. That being the case, what I'm saying to you is this. Um, Marcus Aurelius, people talk about stoicism and stoic. He was a, one of the great stoic philosophers and practitioners, and he was an emperor. And he said that you should try your best to do very few things. And to this point, he was suggesting that you should be good at something. And in this era, no one gets paid for being a great generalist. You get paid the big bucks for being a specialist, just as even if you're a family medicine doctor or general practitioner, physician, you'll never get anywhere near as much money as a neurosurgeon because they are highly specialized. And it is for those very rare skills that we are best compensated. So in as much as that's the case, you should seek to be very high skilled or you should seek to put a product in a marketplace that can be resold an infinite number of times, whether it's a digital product or it's a product that is physical with good product, uh, profit margins. And thinking in terms of side hustle, you really need to think in terms of big goal. Well, what is my big goal in terms of lifestyle? What are the number of skills and unique talents that I can bring to bear to help get me there financially? And also, what is my tolerance? What is my tolerance for boredom, meaning doing things that are tedious? You know, some you can make money doing certain things that are tedious. Like, for example, writing code can be tedious for some people. But if you get good at it, you can make a tremendous amount of money as a very sophisticated um, software engineer. But the, the fact is, you know, if you're making $100,000 on your side hustle, well, you don't really need a job. You should be asking yourself, well, how do I multiply what I'm doing with my side hustle? So we want the questions to make sense, and they're going to make the most sense when you start with a realistic goal. And that's one thing that I notice a lot of these get-rich-quick people don't talk about because when people mention a goal, we know that there's a process. There may be time involved. And truth be told, the time always goes quicker than you realize, especially when you have good advice and you're going for like a fearless lunatic with full faith that you will be successful. And if you're focused, you'll be successful. But here's the problem. Most people are not focused. They quit too early. Yeah, they have a good idea. It's a good idea. They quit too early. Or they don't have a good idea. And the reason they don't have a good idea is because they listen to someone like this or they didn't get advice from an expert who could have said, oh, it's a good idea, but tweak it this way. Now it's a great idea. Or do it this way. Execute on it this way. You'll get there faster. But the problem is people lack focus and they lack persistence and therefore they don't get to the prize. So in summary, my advice for all of you watching, but specifically Parker out of love is number one, define the goal, the big goal, the one you really want. Define the way, the path to the goal. It doesn't really matter. Just you know, get something on the page. Ask yourself, do I currently have the skills? Do I have the people? Yes, you will need collaborators. And am I well positioned to get this done? When I say well positioned, what I'm talking about is you know, sometimes we're not ideally positioned to do certain things. In one of my businesses, I needed to sell to a particular type of individual. So I hired a bunch of white women to sell for me because I knew that the persons I was trying to sell to, middle-aged white men, would much rather buy from a beautiful young white woman than a young black guy. It just is what it is. I was not positioned uh, to make that sell. So I put someone else in position to act on my behalf whom I could pay at a lower rate to get the job done. Okay. So those are the things to consider. And, and I'm wishing you much success and congratulations on your good salary. On cash out, we have Vernell said tuition. Peace of the saints. Okay. So I, I think we're good on this one. He says, I'm creating a YouTube channel. Let me see. In a YouTube channel, I, I started uploading shorts on my Instagram. I'm building my own brand, hoping that one day when my channel is big enough, I will be able to create. Oh, he's hoping. That's not a plan, my boy. Hope is not a plan, my boy. That, that is uh, saddening to hear someone giving hope as a plan. Furthermore, you know you're not talking to a business person when they start talking about brand. This is what really annoys me. I know I'm talking to a novice. You, don't, you never start with a brand. You start with a product, and it should be a damn good product. And from a great product, then you might have the possibility of expanding your offering and going deeper into existing customers, pause, or increasing the breadth and access to more customers through more offerings. So when someone's talking about brand, I know this is an, an imbecile who's thinking pie in the sky. You see, the brand doesn't matter. When you create good product, the brand doesn't matter. For example, this uh, velvet shirt right here, 
everyone compliments this. Old white guys, young white women, Asian women, Arab guys, everyone compliments it. Black folks, everyone compliments it. The brand doesn't matter. You can't see a brand. They compliment it because it's unique. They've never seen anyone wearing a, a velvet shirt. It's unique. Hence, making this product is a unique value add in the marketplace. The brand doesn't matter. But I tell you what, if I were to continue creating products such as this in velvet, and then I called it MDB label, and every time someone saw one of these products, they're like, hey, what brand is that? And someone said MDB label, they're like, oh, I haven't heard of it. But then they keep hearing of it. Then the brand has equity. Then it becomes a real brand that matters in the world. Then people start to buy it. Not even because it looks good, just because it's MDB label, because the brand has equity. Anytime I hear someone speak of brand, they don't even have a goddamn product. You haven't sold a million dollars of anything. I know that these people are fools. And sometimes fools, the, the actions of fools amount to evil. Sometimes stupidity amounts to evil. It is What he's doing is evil. I know for him, he's just trying to earn a dollar. But the damage he is doing and providing the wrong knowledge is evil. I say that as a person who has toiled. Do you know how much emotion goes into starting a business? Do you know how much stress and uncertainty and how much of your own money? And sometimes you damage your personal credit trying to make a fortune, which for many people will never happen. Yeah, it's evil to give bad advice. Carrying on. Caught up there? And I'm glad I was asked about that because I feel like I did something righteous in steering you away from that BS. Now, I already said that in terms of the jobs that are often recommended, uh, being a virtual assistant or even a video editor remotely would not be a realistic opportunity for those who live in the West or in developed economies. Conversely, this is a very realistic opportunity if you live in a economy where there are low wages and low cost of living. It's a perfect opportunity, especially if you can get an employer in the West because they're more likely to pay you a higher rate and have lower expectations in terms of number of hours worked and things of this nature. So it's a great opportunity. The challenge, if you do live in the developing world, is access to those employers. That is the challenge. But that's a great opportunity, and it's very realistic if you live in the developed world and you are competent, timely, and reasonably intelligent. You can easily be a virtual assistant uh, using Indeed or LinkedIn to access the Western customer. And uh, you can use Fiverr to access the Western customer on the video editing side if that's what you'd like to exercise as a skill. Otherwise, if you're in the West, you probably want to try to do these jobs in person. And also, I spoke of positioning earlier. I often speak of this concept, and you'd be wise to take note of that. For example, there's some jobs which is going to be harder for you to get hired. You might have all of the skills in the world, but you're not in the right position. And people call it discrimination. They call it racism. I just call it positioning objectively, which is to say that if someone's hiring for a nanny or they're hiring for, for a babysitter, if you're a young black guy, you're not going to get hired. It just is what it is, buddy. It just is what it is. Um, if you're hiring for an au pair, if you're a male, you're not going to get hired. There are a number of jobs that are just not going to hire you because you don't fit the model that they have in their head. And you have to be aware of that. Now, what are some of the realistic opportunities for making money? Well, number one, reselling your items, your personal items, whether we're talking about clothing or property that are pre-owned products with brand equity. They're pre-owned products with brand equity. So what I mean is if you have this uh, hat, which you would get from mdblabel.com, you can resell it here on this market right now that we're speaking on because other people know the brand they respect and appreciate it. If you have a bag that's Chanel or, or uh, Hermes, you can resell it for, uh, to other people even though it's used and they're going to buy it because the brand is very strong equity. So reselling your items that are well-preserved and they're, they're from a brand with significant equity like your iPhone from Apple has significant brand equity, people will purchase it. So that's one way that you can actually make money. Yeah, clear out your closet and clear out those uh, pieces of property which you don't really use. And there's some great uh, technologies that you can utilize like Poshmark or Mercari to do so. Then the other thing is being an online tutor. Well, you have a lot of goofballs who think that this is a, a proper opportunity. Now, you have to be quite sophisticated for this to be a realistic opportunity. But if you made good marks in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, if you did well in your chemistry class, or your biology class, or your mathematics course, you'd be a great online tutor. You can make money there. With regards to um, being a language tutor, if you live in the West, 
you will not be a language tutor because there's someone else in the third world that speaks your language and probably a couple other ones. And in many cases, better than you do. And they're going to be a language tutor for a very low cost. So, you know, language teachers, it's not a smart thing to do. I, I personally know a young lady who thought she'd be a language teacher and it's like, Shorty, uh, you're not going to make much money doing that. Good looking girl. She made some YouTube videos and did all right in terms of viewership because people just click it because she's good looking. And that's why, again, with positioning, men, you have to know that you're not going to be able to make money as easily as a girl can. She can just show her butthole and make 180 bucks a month, right? Just showing her butthole. Now, how much is someone going to uh, pay to see your butthole? And probably nothing. They probably pay zero dollars to see your butthole, right? That being the case, you need to be a little bit sharper and do keep your eyes out. I am going to do a video called Guy Code. And it's going to be like probably like 100 rules on what guys need to stop doing so that we can restructure this world in the correct way. You dig? Because our behavior is actually causing us to suffer. Carrying on. Go ahead, take a pause for the cause real quick. Now let's talk a little bit about real estate. And can you pop that um, that link in the description, excuse me, uh, that link in the chat for them? Uh, this is a great lecture given by Mark Pfeiffer. I could have given the lecture myself, except he knows more than I do about real estate. So I let him give the lecture because compared to him, I am nothing. So I wanted the best person to give you this lecture. You'll know that you're talking to honorable men and wise men when they are willing to say, I don't know. And they can direct you to someone who does know. It's not even humility. It's just honesty. So, you know, I say that as one who has real estate uh, and has had real estate in many places. Now, real estate is a unique vehicle uh, for accumulating capital because it is very old, but it's still, it's very old, but it will always be on, on the list of things that make you money. You see, there's some things that make you money today that were not opportunities that existed 20 years ago, like YouTube, for example. You can make money on YouTube 20 years ago. There's no such thing as a social media influencer 20 years ago. Now, here's the funny thing. 20 years in the future, there might not be YouTube and there might not be anything such as a social media influencer, but I promise you there will still be real estate. And we're going to dig into why that is and how you can make some money and what you can learn in the uh, real estate investment course. I, I don't see what link you're talking about. I went to both of your channels. Oh, really? So if you uh, go, you said channels, you mean websites? So if you go to uh, the, no, it's the assassin.com. I'm sorry, the assassin.com. You go to shop and there's oh, a link, the for, link the for the to... lecture. Yeah. I apologize for being unclear. Y'all caught up there? No, there's two. Okay. I'll address the first one while you look for that. Darius writes, that person also makes videos on talking to women. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, nah, he ain't going to win with women because, look, here's the thing. Um, there's some people, there, there are different ways to catch a woman, right? There are different ways. And, you know, I know women well, and there was nothing about him that's going to catch a female. You heard me? Like, for example, I remember this one cat, and he, he's a great uh, character to explain, you know, certain things about women. I remember it was, I was graduating University of California, Berkeley, and my girlfriend at the time had got me to go to a salsa dancing club. I'd never been salsa dancing before. And I was there and there's this uh, Latino fellow, short. And I know he was not Mexican. He was not like Central American. He was like probably like uh, Dominican or Puerto Rican, you know, Afro Latino, like from one of those places in the Caribbean. And this gentleman was, uh, Probably like five five. You heard me? He five five. Arms is jelly. Got a little pot belly. Not a good looking guy. He looked like Diego Rivera. Uh, excuse me, Diego Rivera. Not a good looking guy. Um, I'm talking about the Mexican artist, right? Am I right about that? Anyways, if you know, you know. Point is this: this ball was covered in sweat, right? So he's an ugly looking, like Afro Latino, fair skinned Afro Latino guy. Ugly, big bulbous nose. Uh, yeah, exactly. Diego Rivera. Yeah. Big bulbous nose, like a, a skin that looked like he had um, acne as a child. He had like acne scars and he had like stringy, curly hair that was covered in sweat. So the hair is glistening, covered, is covered in sweat. He's wearing a short sleeve, halfway buttoned down, just covered in sweat. He's wearing some baggy dockers 
and I don't even remember what kind of shoes, but probably like some old beat up black leather shoes, right? Homie looked a mess. He looked a mess, but he had the swagger of number one. I give a grand total of zero fucks. Grand total. It's very apparent. And he was sweating all over the place, but he was slinging these thick broads around like they were mere twigs. Now he's five foot five. You heard me? He's a small guy. He was out of shape. He wasn't good looking. He was sloppily dressed. But the mojo, you heard me? The swagger was there. You're, yeah, he over here, you know, he Rico Suave in these hoes. So to look at him outside of his element, you'd be like, no, 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 no. But he had the I don't give a F, and he really was like that. You heard me? And he's slinging these hoes, turn these thick, these thick thoroughbreds into twigs. You heard me? And there's even an appeal there for women. There's a carnal appeal for even that kind of guy. But this dude that we we're just listening to, the, the bald dude in the sloppy suit with the imperfect English, nah, he has no appeal. I wouldn't listen to him talk about a broad. Hell nah, that ball lying. That ball lying. He paying for them cheap hookers in Ukraine. You heard me? He over there in Ukraine getting that discount coochie because it's a war going on. You heard me? Yeah, nah, he ain't, nah, he lying. Anyways, he writes, uh, that person also makes videos uh, on talking to women and why you should not compliment women or take their or take their compliments. What kind of weirdo shit is that? That's strange as hell. Here's number two. Any dates that happened after they uh, complimented your velvet? I think he's talking about your shirt. Any dates? What do you I, mean, like dates with women? I, I think so. Ah, I see. That's usually not my goal. You know, my goal generally is, and I don't know if I want to say it right now, but it's usually not my goal. Uh, but let's just say, if you are a clever man, you can make an opportunity of anything. And I'll be winning out here. Carrying on. Paul said, your time and knowledge is appreciated, Saint. Thank you. And it's crazy, too, because when you line up these balls and you line me up, it's like, something here doesn't look legit and anymore. That was Paul's second time coming in this time, too, by the way. Word. This is the Paul that always comes always in ahead of time. Comes in early, like um, a real one. Muhammad said, hey, Saint, can I be your editor for free? I can send in my demo of my previous work. I mainly do music videos, but I'm versatile in editing. That'd be really cool. Yeah, definitely. Send it uh, to the email below. We definitely appreciate that. And I was just looking today at uh, Instagram and it's so pornographic in nature. One video I'd love to do is like a, you know, about a 10 minute video just explaining how Instagram today is providing, uh, you know, soft core, um, you know, porn pornographic experience for children. And it's also participating in the grooming process. I think that can be something that's meaningful. And also we got a bunch of other content to be edited. So that would be appreciated. And I thank you. All right. Did you ever get that link posted up? Can you oh, text yeah, that it one is to me? Posted. Okay, let me grab it from there then. I don't think it'll let. I can text it. Okay, thanks. So on this real estate piece, I want to outline. Um, some of the things that are included in that lecture. It's a two hour lecture, but it's very rich because it goes through a specific case study speaking to like the things he's actually done. And when I always say take advice on brick making from brick makers, when you listen to a lot of these folks on the internet, they're telling you how to get rich, but they're not telling you how to get rich through means that they're very familiar with. You see the uh, lady boy that I played earlier, she's saying, like, I'm going to show you nine ways to earn money. It's like, but you've not tried all nine of these ways. And you got a million subscribers and many of these memes rely on a large audience and you're still not making much money and you have a whole team with you. And so you're splitting up your, your, your modest income between five people. It's really nothing now. It's not, it's not anything to brag about or make a video about. So anyways, uh, real estate investing. So the first thing I want to let you all know is that if you're planning to get into real estate investing, you don't want to start on the investing side before you've been, even been on the ownership side as a resident. So that's number one. You never dive into like certain things you don't dive into. You dive in when you know. Listen to me. This is good advice for your whole life. You don't dive into most things. You only dive in when you know. Even those who are in my course right now, it's a practicum course on creating and monetizing an app. I've done that a lot. I know that very well. When I come up with an idea, I still don't dive in like, yeah, I'm going to invest a bunch of money. I'm going to hire a bunch of people. This is going to be successful. Never do I do that. I go in extraordinarily cautiously every single time because I have experience. 
and I don't want to lose my shirt being foolish. How long do your hats take to ship? When you put in your information for the purchase, it generally gives you an estimate. Yeah. Thank you for that question. So I go in cautiously, even though I know the app business very well. One thing a businessman is confident that he never knows is you never know mass psychology perfectly. The best thing you can do is to get consumer feedback. That's why even today, you can actually fill out surveys for a living. Now you'll make pennies. Um, maybe it could get you through the month if you live in like a very low income country, but you can take surveys and get paid just to give your opinion. And that's because corporations want your opinion because corporations are aware that they don't know. They have to get feedback from the consumer. For example, do you think if Budweiser was aware that if they let that, uh, do, 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 do. transformer Decepticons form. If they let that transformer, you know, promote their beer, they, I would have known that they'd lose their audience because their audience is mostly uh, hillbillies and rednecks, right? Uh, hillbillies and rednecks don't like transformers. Neither do I. But the point is that obviously they didn't know that they didn't do enough consumer research. And when they made that move, they lost a significant amount of revenue. They even lost their position in Costco. Costco kicked them out because they weren't getting enough sales. So the point is that you always go in cautiously, not anticipating success. Even if you're a successful person, you don't anticipate success. huh? Because we're not selling things based on vice. Vice is like sex, drugs, gambling. Well, those things sell themselves. You heard me? If you ever been the dope man, the dope sell itself. You got good product. You heard me? You ever been abroad? You, look, you go ahead, put on a short skirt, walk down that boulevard late at night. I don't care what country you in. Somebody going to stop and see what it costs. I promise you that one. But if you're not selling those goods, you need to understand markets. Now, that being the case, you need to understand a number of things involved in the business. So that's why with real estate, you don't go and become a real estate investor be before you own real estate personally, before you've owned your own home, before you've owned the home and lived in the home, carried out the maintenance. That's called owner occupant. And my recommendation, if you check out um, conference four, in conference four, um, I have a whole bit on real estate. It was the last conference, not the boot camp, but the last conference. I have a whole bit. I talk about personal finance and I talk about real estate, why it was a good time to buy and what the benefits are and what you need to know. That's where you need to start. The second piece where Mark comes in, he's talking about commercial real estate. He's talking about investment properties. Earlier, someone mentioned the duplex or triplex. You even saw Joshua was on the line and he's very successful in the real estate game. So when you have folks like a Joshua or a Mark, those are the people you want to hear from. And what Mark is talking about. Which one is that that you recommend? In terms of. The conference war footage. Other than the one that we already posted about real estate. It might be full conference three in education. Oh, actually, no, 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 no it's not. I see. That's more like. Ah, it's uh, bottom left corner. It says conference four footage and it says why real estate now. That is the one. It's only 17 bucks. Boy, we're giving out deals out here. Thank you. That's the one. Yeah, drop that in there for them. That's the place where you start. Now, here's the thing. Uh, with Mark, he's talking about investment property. So the first thing that he does is he takes you to his first investment property, which I think he started with in 2009, which sounds a long time long time ago. So he started in 2009 with his first uh, commercial piece of real estate. And he goes through the entire journey. And one thing I really like about the way he describes it, and this is what you need, is he says, you know what? I didn't have a great credit because I was a kid. I didn't have a bunch of money because I was a kid. This is how I did it. This is how I put the loan together. That's what you need. So he goes through loans. He also eventually talks about refinancing because they need to pull out some more money to put it, to invest into the property called renovation. He talks not only talks about why renovate and the necessity to reno, to the necessity to renovate in the property that he had which was built in 1908 and it was also in prime real estate. It was in San Francisco Bay Area. That's prime real estate. That is a great market and he was also in a college town. So so much value there. But he shows you all of the renovations he did in photographs. So he says, "Look, Here's a photo before how the bathroom looked. He said, this, I didn't like the way this looked. This window is the wrong size. This color is the wrong color. Then he shows you the after picture. Boom. 
I, I, I remove that toilet. I put in this kind of toilet. It's more energy efficient. I enlarge this window. I change this color. I added the feeling of space. He shows you precisely how he renovated a bathroom, how he renovated a bedroom, and all these specific things that add value for the cons consumer to spend their money with him as a landlord such that he's getting a significant amount of money every month. Now that uh, crackhead uh, lady boy earlier showed us she's the individual is getting less than $2,000 a month on one of the things she recommends to you, stop it, knock it off. Mark is talking about $12,000 a month on, the, on one property, 12,000 per month on one property, radically different ball game we're talking about here, right? That's what you need to learn. When you can get $12,000 a month on one property, you don't need a side hustle. We got to get out of this kind of foolish thinking like side hustles. Forget that. What's your main hustle look like? You heard me? Why your main hustle ain't, ain't turning over the money like you need to? Secondly, he talks about profits, which is to say, well, how do you calculate the profitability of an opportunity that you're looking at? That's important. Yes, it might look good to the eye. The house might have curb appeal. But when you run the numbers, you consider the taxes, you consider the renovation, you consider all of these factors. Oh, wow, I'm not going to make that much money. You need some know how to consider those numbers. That's why uh, you can book a consultation with Mark for 250. And whether you're buying a personal home or a uh, commercial uh, investment opportunity, I highly recommend that you sit down with someone like Mark. Even if you don't sit down with Mark, sit down with someone. I'll tell you why. When you're spending a significant amount of money, whether it's on a car or a home, and for most average people, the most expensive, expensive things they'll ever buy are cars and homes. Now, if you're a business person, you're going to spend a lot more money than that on business, on campus, all, all kinds of crazy stuff you could spend money on, all kinds of crazy stuff. Trust me, jets, all kinds of stuff. Hell, private flight costs more than buying a car. <laughs> you heard me? One private flight costs more than purchasing a new car. We obviously ain't talking about my box. We're talking about like an average person's car. Point is this. Um, sit down with someone like Mark and figure that out before you make the purchase. Um, secondly, he talks about management companies, which is to say that when, we're, when we, you want to become wealthy, you have to be able to scale, meaning that having one property is cash flowing you $12,000 a month. That's dope. But how can I get five of those properties? And if I got five of those properties, each one is cash flowing me 12,000 a month or more, or even less. Well, now I have a lot more responsibility. I got five properties. I got say, you know, 10 to 20 persons per property. Hell, now I'm dealing with like 60 to 100 individuals. I don't have time to do that. Or maybe I do have time. I just don't want to spend the time doing it. I need a management company. How do you select a management company? What fee should they take? What are they responsible for covering? Oh, and what about contracts, whether it's with my management company or contracts with my actual tenant? What should that look like? What are realistic expectations? He actually goes through all of those things within the course of two hours. It's quite extraordinary. And within the course of that, if you have questions because you actually want to do something, you want to do something with your life, you want to take some actions in your life, you can book a consultation with the same guy that you learned from who actually knows what he's talking about. That's pretty cool. I wanted to take out the time to tell you that. We have Victor just got the conference four footage, the $17 one, not the one that you're referencing. Shout out to Victor. Yeah. And that's a great starting place. Um, I would recommend that you would watch that before you would watch Mark's and, and Mark gets fairly complex. And, you know, when I price these things for say 17 bucks, it's really a gift. You, know, you really need to say, good Lord, this is priced way under the value this is a gift to me and I'm giving you the gift. I want it to be accessible to you and I want the knowledge to get you started on the right path because here's the thing. You might learn about this when you're 18, but you might not have the money at 18. But if you have the knowledge, you know what to look for. You know what a good opportunity is. Within the next couple of years, you're going to see opportunities. You're going to meet people. You're going to be able to put together deals. You might not even be able to do the deal yourself. You can put it together for someone else. It's opening up opportunity and it's making you attuned to greater things that will shape your future. Get this knowledge now. Get it early. Do not hesitate in life. Uh, he says, who has expertise in selling on Amazon? Uh, Mark has great expertise and also Mitchell has great expertise on that. Um, you can send me the, v, the fee via Cash App and I'll get you some uh, set up with both of them. Just make sure that in the uh, memo, you put your email address, just put like your email address, uh, consultation Mitchell or consultation Mark, and we'll get and you set up. What's the price for those? 250. Okay. 
We have Victor said, peace to the saints. I just bought the conference board footage. I will be reviewing it over the weekend. Thank you for your guidance, sir. It is very much appreciated. Absolutely. And remember, saints, generally you get what you paid for. So if you didn't pay anything, you ain't going to get nothing. There, there are one or two individuals on the planet Earth that are doing things sincerely out of the kindness of their heart, and you can tell who they are. You can tell who they are. You read my book, The Black Box, you realize, like, wow, this guy came from nothing. He came from great struggle, not fake struggle like Gary V. This guy's a phony. Like, he inherited businesses from his parents. He had two responsible parents, took good care of them, got him good education, get handed off a business. He's a faker. He's after your dollar. He wants to be rich and famous. He's a faker. Has this, I came out of nowhere story. Buddy, give me a break. But when you have someone like me, I struggle so badly. I watch my mother struggle so badly. I see my brother struggle, my entire family. I had so many things that I felt like I deserved I didn't have. I went without so many times. I had to understand the concept of not eating enough when you're still hungry. I don't want your children to experience that. I don't want you to experience that. I truly believe everyone can be prosperous and the world is better when we're all prosperous. People don't steal when they have what they need, generally speaking. So that, that's what drives me. When I price things at $17, I price it so you can afford it. Uh, truth be told, you making a purchase of $17 doesn't really move the needle for me because uh, I just went to the spa, get you know get a pedicure and a manicure. I don't go to the regular spa. You heard me? We go to the ultra luxury one where they got the saint pattern in the wall. If you don't follow me on IG, you should. Marquette Devon, you want to see how bosses live? Marquette Devon on IG, you heard me, and just try to figure out, like, did he get them to put up the Saints pattern in the spa? Ask yourself, why, why, why would it be there? We're not in New Orleans. Why would it be there? Um, how, much, how much was my spa bill? $800. My spa bill. I'm not trying to make 17 bucks off of you. I'm trying to make you invest 17 bucks in yourself. I'm trying to force you guys to be successful. My spa bill is $800. I'm on here as a labor of love. Shout out to Philip, but I do have a business meeting and I for damn sure I'm going to get to this bread. You heard me? So hit me with your questions now. Uh, shout out to Philip uh, supporting the work. We have Mark on Cash App said, sorry, I'm late. Shout out to Mark. And, and I, I trust that's not Mark, uh, the real estate no, expert. Mark, I think, has done some beats with you. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Mark P. Yeah, his beats are cold in a real way. In a real way. Yes, and you're all caught up? Fantastic. Saints, I'll give, give you a little bit of time to share your questions as we go ahead and wind down. But I really enjoyed the session from Mark. Um, you know, people, depending on your level of wealth, you'll, you'll utilize real estate in different ways. Some people want to be, you know, a real estate mogul. Um, some people use real estate as a primary way of driving wealth and income, and they've done it brilliantly. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki swears by it, wrote a ton of books. He's been very successful with his real estate business as well as his educational businesses. Um, and I think he's changed a tremendous number of lives. Obviously, Donald Trump, wildly wealthy. He, you know, he's done this, but he always came back up here and it was due to real estate. Uh, so real estate is clearly a good way to go. Uh, it's reliable. And depending on what you uh, have to play with, uh, your different opportunities, you can use it for different things. It, it should always be a part of your portfolio. And in my case, um, I got a lot of options. Real estate is not my primary thing. That's why I recommend to you uh, Mark Pfeiffer because that's one of his main things. And the important thing to know is this. Be real with yourself. What I do, most people can't do. Like some of the things that I do, like I'll give you an example. Like this velvet shirt, this is player. Ah, because I'm player. That's why I thought of it. I came up with it. It matches my personality. Like my whole life, people are like, ah, you're dripped out. Indeed, I'm Kent Drippy Jr., freshly snipes. And I've always been that way. So I knew if I go into the fashion vertical, I can win there because people have consistently told me the outside world, not my own narcissistic mind, the outside world, like you dripped out. You hear me? I've witnessed it on many occasions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So they don't think I'm playing with it. And you. they like go out of their way to tell you. Look, I've been doing important things and been interrupted. I, many times I've been doing legitimately important. I've been in important business meetings and people literally tap me on the shoulder like, yo, that suit is cold. Cold. I'm like, thank you. I'm over here doing a serious deal right now, but thank you. Point is this. Most people do not have the taste to go into the, mer uh, the merchandise, uh, or shall we say the fashion vertical and do well. Um, furthermore, I'm in the tech space. I do well in the tech space. I've had specific training. I have specific insights into this. I have a lot of experience. It takes time. 
there are certain things that you could do it, but it would take too much energy from you and it would take too much time. When I was injured, I learned Ruby on Rails, which at the time was a very popular language. And I remember coding like, I, I can definitely do this. I can do it. But boy, is this tedious. And when I encounter these bugs, oh my goodness, like I'm having trouble finding good information on Stack Overflow. I called the homie. He was able to help me. But how many times is he going to answer my phone call? You know, what if it's 3 a.m.? Because me, I can't sleep until I get past what I got to get to my goal. I can't stop where the bug is. You hear me? And some of those bugs can take hours to debug. So I could do it, but it costs too much to me. It costs me too much time, costs me too much angst. So I say that to say, do something that you can do. It's realistic for who you are. That's one reason I recommend real estate in as much as you don't have to be a genius. Once you've selected a proper uh, deal, a good deal, good property, fits your budget, and you know people are going to want to move into this property, you know, it's well located, there's grocery stores, access to public transportation, perhaps it's near a university, it's in a reasonably wealthy zip code. There's not much thinking. There's not much to do. You don't need to innovate. I'm in the software business. You have to innovate. You have to constantly update the software. You you're in a race, highly competitive. Mark bought a house that was built in 1908, and it's still making money in 2023. At the time he made the conference, it was 12,000 a month. Who knows what it is now? It's more. That's for sure. There's no. There's no innovating. You don't have to constantly be keeping an eye on that thing like, oh, how am I going to beat the competition? You don't have to beat the competition. God's not making any more land. And all those houses that are in that area, they're not about to disappear. The competition is what it is. You base your product, your house at the market rate rents. You're going to continue making that money. So do what makes sense for you, for your skills, for your understanding, for your tolerance. Hey, we have on... Cash up. Justino said thoughts on 14 K gold Cuban chains. <laughs> I, I don't know precise. I mean, there's so many thoughts one could have the question is, you know, what's the resale value? Um, do they look gaudy? Do they look good? So I don't know precisely what you're asking, but generally speaking, you know, pimp, pimp, hooray. Yeah, man. I mean, I like gold. Um, you know, I definitely wear gold. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, so generally speaking, just like, what are my thoughts? Don't own two, three, four of them. Why not? Why not? Okay, on we have a manual about the how to invest in a rental property, commercial real estate, okay. the video that was just posted. Deep knowledge in there. And honestly, you know, the truth is, I when I use experts or what, if I pay for a consultation with an expert, like sometimes, you know, depending like if you're talking to your lawyer, you have a lawyer on retainer, and you don't have to pay every time you talk to them. Um, they're being paid handsomely otherwise. But if I need to talk to a lawyer in a specific, in a narrow area, you have to pay to talk to them, have a conversation. I do it so I can do things faster. But I, I want to be honest with you. The amount of information that's in that two-hour video uh, where Mark is lecturing, you could get started with that. But there's just a lot more background work that you need to do you know, if you didn't get a consultation. The only reason I recommend a consultation is because I'm always thinking, how can I do it faster? And how can I do it with help? Like I don't like to do things by myself if I don't have to. Like I've done a lot of things by myself uh, and never told anybody you heard me. But when you can use teamwork to make the dream work, you're going to move faster. You're going to get the money in greater sums. So always use teamwork when you can. Don't you're you're not a boss. You're not thinking like a boss if you're not asking how can we do this. Bosses run teams. They run organizations. You should always be thinking about. How can I utilize someone else's knowledge? How can I utilize someone else's labor? Uh, when you try to do it yourself, you, know, you really don't respect your mortality. Speaking of teamwork, the St. Flo's who got the watches has a yes. layup for marketing and it's based on your labor. True, true. Not That's only true. you helping design the product, it's but love. he has marketing with the song that oh, yeah. Wisdom keeps referencing. Velvet T, go watch on me. I'm keeping it P. Debo in a tuxedo classy p the whole with it because the game ain't got no limits master p keep a hoe working hard even though she's a work of art master peace bars okay bars go we, ahead we have daria said peace to the saints i'm currently 28 making a salary of fifty five thousand a year however i often work 60 plus hours a damn week. what would you recommend i do to increase my income uh wow okay so number one 60 hours a week sounds like a lot doesn't it 
does. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. Uh, I'm assuming you're in America from the spelling of your first name. I presume that you're in the United States. And if that's the case, um, if you're working 60 hours a week on a 55K salary, you're, or you're salaried. You're not hourly. So generally speaking, higher incomes tend to be salaried, not hourly. So the first thing I would ask myself is never like, what new thing can I do? I never ask, what new thing can I do? I always ask, what am I already doing that I can do smarter? And the reason I do that is because when you do new things, you have to get a new skill, got to get a new contact, got to get some new information. Sometimes there are things you're already doing that you can do more effectively. So that'll be my first question, which is, okay, how do I increase my income from my current job? So if you're in a position where no matter how well you do the job or how poorly you do the job, it doesn't impact your income, then you're screwed. You're locked in until you get a promotion. So then I would say, okay, well, if I'm not in a commission-based role or a role that gives me bonuses based on performance, then my next step is to figure out if I can get a promotion. And you should usually ask for the promotion early and often. There's a science to it, which is to say, considering inflation, considering uh, profits of the company, considering your performance and your performance reviews. Those are all things that I would factor into asking for that promotion. And sometimes you ask for the promotion, not even expecting to get it, but you do it to set the mindset of the person above you, knowing that you want it. And now I presented this and you declined it. And my question to you, when you said, no, I can't give you a promotion. My question is, I understand. Let's define a time period over which I could get said promotion that boosts my pay rate by said amount. And you tell me what are the metrics I need to achieve quarterly. And then I'll break those down daily. And let's check in every two weeks to make sure that I'm on track. And then I check in with them every two weeks. And then when it comes time for that bump, I, I pull out all my documents. Hey, this is all of our notes from you know, the last three months of me meeting with you every two weeks. And every time I said, am I on track? And you said, yes. What up with that promotion though? And if he said no, then I'd probably work a little bit of magic. We could talk about that at another time, but there's no need to anticipate that because if you do what I just told you, he's going to say yes, nine out of nine. Hey, uh, Miles just got the conference for episode one, which is the one on personal finance and real estate. That's critical. Absolutely. Shout out to Miles. Shout out to those men investing in themselves. That's the best investment you can make is in your damn self, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Yeah. Bet on yourself. <laughs> you heard me invest in yourself and bet on yourself. You don't know what these jokers are about to do. I mean, imagine you saw that Crawford Spence fight. Everybody thought Crawford uh, Spence was going to win, didn't they? They thought Spence was going to win and Crawford was going to lose. I was there among in the action. Huge, massive crowd. Everybody dressed to the nines, the men and the women. And that place was filled with Texans, all rooting for Spence. Then he started getting the boobop beat out of him. And the whole stadium went quiet. I don't know if I've ever seen a stadium that large that was that quiet while being packed. Which is to say, bet on yourself. You don't know what other people are about to do. Make sure that you have the skills and you can deliver. Shout out to Crawford. Made me a little bag. I'm caught up. I accept all bags. Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. I'll, I'll take a little bit of time just to identify the name of such a session. What do we call this one? Oh, like a, to make it recurring? Yeah, if we did a recurring. What's a clever name? Let's see what this one is called. It's called Ways to Earn Money, Realistic versus Fake, plus real estate investment and being landlord. What about earn money like a boss? Well, that's what we have Boss University for. There's like, I don't know how many hours of content in there. And one thing I don't like doing is repeating myself, truth be told. And if I do repeat myself, you should know that I'm doing it intentionally for a purpose, not because I forgot. I didn't forget. On PayPal, we have none of the above said for the recent trending news, as I promised. Oh, it's in $50. Sorry. Baller alert. And he said, for the recent trending news, as I promised, I'm halfway through Bosch University. Feels wow. like I'm 120% through the masterpiece with the masterpiece does it again. Yes, indeed. And I like to be able to hear they said I'm halfway through with Boston University, which is to say it's not something you get in, you just race through. But he feels like he's already done it all. Yeah. Plus some. There's so much information, good, good practical information. And when I create things like Boston University, I put a lot into it. And, and the most important piece is that, say I give you five in a, in a given section or a, a given lesson, I give you five things you could do. 
if you just did one, actually did it, actually executed on it, you'd be so much farther ahead. You, know, you might follow me on Instagram. Yeah, you see some cool stuff every now and then, but all my stories and sometimes on the posts, I tell you something that's important and you might not realize how important it is. When I say things like, every good day starts with exercise. Sounds simple. Every good day starts with exercise. Sounds simple. But if you could actually follow that, you would be happier during the day. You'd be stronger. You'd be more confident. It would add so much richness to your life. And that's why I say it. And I mean every bit of it. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.